गुड मॉर्निंग डियर स्टूडेंट्स आई मिस नविदा शेख फ्रॉम ब्रहन मुंबई महानगर पालिका एम सी जी एम वर्चुअल क्लास आई वेलकम ऑल माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स टू अनदर एन इंटरेस्टिंग सेशन इन टूडे सेशन वील बी लर्निंग समथिंग यू एंड इंटरेस्टिंग फ्रॉम ए साइंस टेक्सट बुक सो लेट्स गेट्स Good morning, students. I welcome all my dear students to another interesting session. And today's session, we'll be learning about um, the very first chapter in our sixth standard science textbook, that is Natural Resources, Air, Water, and Land. I am Miss Nick. May I am Miss Sheikh Naveeda, and I'll be teaching you all this uh, lesson. So, before we learn about natural resources, air, water, and land, the very first thing that I would is this image. now when you look at it you will find that there are certain organisms which are on the surface of the earth which are some are flying in the air and some are inside the water so this earth is divided in three spheres first is the hydrosphere which is comprising of water and the organism which are living in it then we have lithosphere that is land l for land and l for lithosphere so remember that lithosphere is the land which is present on our earth the entire land which is there theek okay, hai comprising of mountains the land that you walk on that all comes under lithosphere next you have atmosphere the air that you breathe the atmosphere that you can see above you cannot actually see air but you can feel it so these three things are extremely extremely important where air water and land are the earth atmosphere hydrosphere and lithosphere respectively air is atmosphere land is lithosphere and water is hydrosphere okay so you have to remember these things now all these three things they comprise together and they form biosphere now air water and land all these three things are extremely important for a living organism to survive see the animals which are on the land they need water they need air they need land for their survival and their existence same way the animals and the plants which are there in beneath the ocean beneath the water they also need air they do not get the atmosphere directly but it is required by them and uh, they get it they need the plants beneath the sea are also they also require land which is present there and they also need atmosphere so every living organism whether plant or animal or humans they need all these three components together that is atmosphere lithosphere and hydrosphere okay it is extremely important for the existence of life now these three things that is the atmosphere hydrosphere and lithosphere they provide us with numerous resources like water for drinking purpose animals for various purpose like for eating for uh, uh, animals like um, sheep they you get wool from them you get milk you get egg you get protein from them right same way we get soil which is extremely useful for cultivation of crops and plants then you have uh, sun which is present the light that you the rays that you get from the sol uh, sun that is used as a source of solar energy wind which extremely important for producing wind energy you get oil crude oil coal all these things are present in the on the surface of the earth in all these three spheres that we learned right now that is the hydrosphere lithosphere and atmosphere okay so it is extremely important that air water and land these are a few factors which are important for the sustaining of life on the planet earth and it helps to fulfill our basic needs like you need food for survival you need water to uh, for your survival you need plant you need animals so all these things are present in our planet itself naturally it is present and you have to be you have to be very careful while using these resources because they are naturally present but some of them get can can get extinct as well 
Now, as I told you that all these three together comprise of biosphere. So different living things occupy these three spheres of the earth. These living things are the part of the lithosphere, hydrosphere and atmosphere which they occupy together is called as biosphere. Okay. Now, you have to learn about the proportion of land and water. How much amount of land is there and how much amount of water is there? If you see our planet Earth, if you look at this globe itself, you will come to know that there is numerous um, as compared to land, you have more amount of water present. That is hydrosphere ka jo level hai, it is more as compared to lithosphere. So here you have a picture which is explaining you all about how much is land and how much is water. So you have 71% water present on your earth and land is about 29% which is covered. Okay, only 29% land is covered and whereas the remaining 71% is water. Now, what are the five layers of the atmosphere that we need to know? Atmosphere here is the air we are talking about. Air is having the air we are calling it as atmosphere. It has five layers in it. That is troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere and exosphere. Now troposphere is a sphere where you find aeroplanes and helicopters flying. Then you have the ozone layer after that, which is extremely important and we'll be discussing about it in the later part. Stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, exosphere. Now we will not go in detail because you have learned about this layer in your fifth standard also. So we'll kind Now the very first natural resource that we're going to talk about is air. Today's period is dedicated to air. Now, the air in the atmosphere around the earth contains nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide and six inert gases. Nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, water vapor and dust particles. Now, up till now we just learned that uh, nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide and inert gases are present. But what, um, which gas is present, is which amount and how is it useful to us, we'll be learning in today's period. Okay. So here, this is a graphical uh, representation of how much nitrogen is present in our air. There is 78% of nitrogen present. You have 21% of oxygen present. You have 0.4% of carbon dioxide gas. And the other remaining approximately 1% is other gases, mostly inert gases. Okay. Now we'll be learning about some uses of gases in the air. Means whatever names that we learned right now, nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, inert gases like argon, krypton, xenon. Okay, we'll be learning about their uses also. So let us see. The First, we'll be learning about nitrogen. Nitrogen, it helps in uh, building the necessary proteins in our body. Okay, now here you can see a plant which is uh, getting the nitrogen from the atmosphere through the roots. That is a process which the plants process and they absorb the nitrogen from the atmosphere and utilize it to produce proteins in them. And this protein then is taken as taken up by the animals or by humans. Okay. It is also useful in the production of ammonia and uh, it is uh, ammonia is useful for plants. Okay, again, I'm explaining you all. Next, it is used in airtight packaging of foodstuffs. Now here you can see how airtight foodstuffs are uh, uh, making use of nitrogen gas. Okay, these are a few uses of nitrogen that I've mentioned here. Next is the uses of oxygen. Now, when the word oxygen comes in your mind, the very first thing that clicks in our mind is respiration. Oxygen is important to breathe, right? When you want to breathe, you are breathing since the moment you were born. And um, if you do not breathe, it, things will get very difficult, right? Everybody knows that. So necessary, it is necessary for respiration in living things. All living things require oxygen for respiration. 
okay even plants require oxygen for respiration it is only when um, they do photosynthesis they require carbon dioxide gas do not get confused now normally we breathe through our nose or mouth and we make use of oxygen gas for the process of respiration other than that when people go deep water diving or if they are climbing on um, high mountains the level of oxygen is very low when they go up okay as we have learned last year that uh, the amount of gases which are uh, present in the atmosphere are thicker near the sur earth surface and as they as we go above it becomes rarer and rarer means it becomes less so oxygen level also decreases when you go above the sea level as you increase uh, as you move on it will the oxygen level decreases okay same way humans are not capable of uh, breathing beneath uh, water so we need to take oxygen cylinders in order to breathe comfortably under the sea water as well okay other than that oxygen is required for burning for combustion okay so these are a few uses of oxygen gas there are many more next is carbon dioxide gas carbon dioxide gas as we know that since uh, last year you were learning that photosynthesis is uh, done by plants and they require carbon dioxide gas to prepare their own food so plant use it for preparing their own food here you can see a plant which is taking sunlight which is taking water and uh, they have um, chlorophyll present in them in their leaves and with the help of all these things they prepare their food and release oxygen gas okay so carbon dioxide is mainly required by plants for preparing their food it is also used in fire extinguishers you must have seen these red color cylinders in your schools or whenever you go to a hotel or um, some place malls and all you must have noticed that there are these uh, red color cylinders which are called as fire extinguishers there are different different types of fire extinguishers now there are certain fire extinguishers which have carbon dioxide in them now carbon dioxide uh, does not let a uh, fire to spread it extinguishes fire okay and that is the reason these cylinders are filled with carbon dioxide gases next we have helium helium is used for obtaining low temperature as also for generating lift in airships now here this is a very simple example i could give for helium gas because it is light and um, next you have is argon argon is also an inert gas which is used in electrical bulbs okay neon it is used in decorative lights for or for street lighting you must have used uh, these decorative lights during various festivals christmas eid diwali and during weddings also you must have seen these decorative lights they make use of these um, neon gas which is there in the air then you have krypton krypton which is uh, used in fluorescent uh, tubes just like if nowadays you have led tubes coming up but uh, earlier previously we had now also it is present there are people we are using these tubes which are uh, which make use of krypton gas now in order uh, to have a proper balance in our earth the atmosphere also has a proper filtration going on and it is very important that everything is in a proper balance manner because the atmosphere itself has its filter in it and uh, it has to maintain a proper balance between various gases and other constituents of air it allows the light and heat of the sun to reach the earth whether sun or remember that when the sun uh, rays fall onto the earth not all the rays are useful to us there are some rays which are very harmful to us and this atmosphere is helping us to um cause any harm to us okay with the help of the ozone layer next atmosphere is re responsible for formation of clouds snow rain production okay so whenever you see cloud that is because of the atmosphere the rains that is there it is because so the smoke 
directly if there is any smoke which mixes into the atmosphere it disturbs the balance between the constituents of air this is called as air pollution now harmful gases are given out through combustion of fuels in vehicles in big industries and also through incomplete combustion of fuels like wood and coal means if the coal and coal or wood are does not burn completely they give out harmful gases which is extremely uh, dangerous for us okay which leads to air pollution and it as we all know that air pollution is increasing day by day because of um, fire because of industries emitting harmful gases and from the vehicles all these gases are causing air pollution so these are a few examples of um, the substances which are released like carbon monoxide carbon dioxide nitrogen dioxide sulfur dioxide soot these are few examples of harmful gases which are emitted and uh, much is quite clear to you all in the next coming period we'll be learning about ozone layer as time is up we'll continue with this very important and interesting topic in the next coming period thank you if you like our video please subscribe to our channel and do not forget to hit the like button hope the session was quite useful to you in the next coming period we'll learn something new and interesting till then thank you